Last August in 2023, we embarked on the Sway North American Expedition and we drove two of the four Porsche Cayennes that we had prepared over the prior couple of years from the headquarters of Sway, a research and design studio in Northwest Montana, all the way up through the Arctic Circle to the top of Alaska. So that was about a 6,000 mile round trip journey as part of about 12,000 miles that I drove the Cayenne that month. And so it was me, John Ficara, Trevin and his wife from Sway, and a team that took two up north, but also the other two went southwest. One of them was driven by Christopher Michaels, and he went generally down towards Moab and Vegas, finished in LA, and then ended up going to meet the guys from JR Garage with the vehicle, and they ended up getting it all the way back up to Sway. And so every day in Christopher Michaels' life is quite the adventure, but one day in particular stood out on that southwestern journey. And he was driving one of the 2015 Cayenne turbos that we built to try to be like the ultimate on and off-road Cayenne. And for us, as we were driving north up to Alaska, encountering some really, really bad things that you would still generally call roads. It was something of a test of the vehicles that they performed miraculously well on, but he decided to test it a little bit more than perhaps I was expecting in Moab. And he ended up meeting up with the guys from Matt's Off-Road Recovery, and they made an incredible video about how badly it went and the great means and measures that they had to go to to get the car out. And it involved a bunch of their vehicles, long tow ropes to get the thing unstuck, but ultimately Car 22 did survive, got back on the road, and made it to its final destination. It was a really, really cool video, and to be honest with you, it was my first exposure to the team at Matt's Off-Road Recovery. Now, they've got an amazing amazing channel and they build uh, just the craziest vehicles you could possibly imagine and so I had worked with Sway and we had built along with Bryson from 380 Industries these Cayennes into what I think of when I think of an off-road vehicle and clearly their ideas and the ideas of the general off-roading community it can be very very different than that and so it was cool to me to see just the vast difference in capability of their rigs versus ours but at the end of the day I've been very very happy with the Cayennes and mine number 23 continues to be a very, very happy part of my garage. But in getting to know the guys from Matt's Off-Road Recovery, they brought up this idea of the off-road games. Now, essentially what this is, is they set up an obstacle course and a series of challenges in and around Hurricane Utah, where they bring non-off-roading YouTubers like us and some off-roading YouTubers as teams together to compete. And I loved it Im immediately because, as I've talked about, I sort of view the attention that you guys give us as our audience as a call to be the best possible stewards as we possibly can of your attention. And so whenever possible, we try to increase production value and make as much special content as we possibly can. That's been the entire idea behind Car Trek for me over the last three, four years. And even though my co-presenters are, shall we say, indisposed of late, we do intend to do more Car Trek content. But what I want to make sure that you all understand always is that when you support our sponsors, like Auto Tempest, not only does it allow you to find your next car in the most powerful and the easiest way because they compile the results from all the major listing sites in one place, but they are also one of the biggest supporters of automotive content online, and they are trying as much as they can to make sure that you have the best online automotive viewing experience. And we've shown all of the amazing channels that they support in this month's outro just because it is really, really important that you understand that yes, it's an awesome product and awesome service that we do believe in, but they make this stuff possible. So please today, just go over to Auto Tempest, type in a search, see how amazing it is, because that is exactly how you help us make great content. But Matt and his sponsors have come together to produce these off-road games, and they paired Christopher and me with an off-road YouTuber, Bleepin' Jeep. He's also named Matt, and he's based in the Knoxville, Tennessee area. And Matt and Josh kind of come together to build amazing rigs and take them all. They're very close to Windrock Park, but they go all over the place, including out to Hurricane Utah, where we will be competing with them in the off-road games. But in getting to know Matt and his team and trying to understand exactly what we were in for, because this will certainly be me very out of my element, what'll happen is Christopher and I will be there driving one of the rigs that Matt has built against other crazy rock crawler builds. Now, my experience in off-road driving has been rather limited generally to the stuff that we've done on Car Trek. I've mentioned that my first car was like a 150,000 mile Land Rover Discovery that was a hand-me-down from relatives and it didn't run for very long, but when it did, I just went out and got it stuck on its highway tires, kind of the way Freddie did with the Montero in Car Trek 6. When I think of rock crawling, I think of driving over rocks somewhere between the size of like a brick and a basketball that would be hard for a, you know, factory 
SUV, but it isn't that hard to do. That's not it at all. So what we did is we decided that we needed, Allen Iverson style, some practice. And so we went up, Christopher and I, to Knoxville to meet Matt from Bleep and Jeep and experience his vehicle, the Scorpion, firsthand. And I had no idea what I was in for because I had heard from like Bryson Richards at 380 Industries with the Cayennes that he would take his Cayennes up there to Windrock and do a lot of the trails. And so it sounded like it was generally like possible for a, a normal style rig. As we pull up, we see this thing. And it's really like, it was a Jeep Grand Cherokee and there are still, you know, the engine and some frame parts from the Jeep, but it is a purpose-built rock crawler, drive straight up a wall on 42-inch tires, much larger than, I guess, the 31s that we run on the Cayennes, and that, which is, is, again, really, I guess, more of a road car build than perhaps I'd even thought. But these things have fully articulating suspensions, rear wheel steering, obviously the strongest and craziest differentials and axles as you could possibly imagine, full tube roll cage, and that became an immediate issue because as I climbed out of the Lamborghini, Matt said, um, Ed, how tall are you? I said, well, I'm six foot five. He's like, that's probably going to be an issue because the way the roll apparatus, the cage is built around the seat, I was in it. And of course, you're bashed around, as I would soon learn. And so a helmet was in order, even though they don't always wear helmets for this type of thing. And so I, you know, strap in and I, I have no idea what I'm in for. I said, Matt, why don't you take us up this first trail so I can at least see how far you want us to push this thing. So I don't know how easy it is to break. I don't know anything. What happened next, I, I was not remotely ready for. You know, you look at these obstacles that are not the size of a basketball, they're the size of a Prius or a bus or a refrigerator, and it's like, you're gonna drive over that? But of course, you know, there's no approach angle. You just drive straight up a wall. And what he said was, even the stuff that we see here in Georgia and off-roading in Tennessee, that's really kind of slippery granite rocks and a lot of mud and things like that. When we're out in Sand Hollow in Utah and Hurricane, it's apparently like sandpaper rocks that you could just drive straight up. And he had told me beforehand that he didn't really think anything that they throw at us is gonna be beyond the capability of his rig, particularly with its ability to winch and to rear steer. Now, I had no idea how durable this thing really was going to be, and we did have a couple of issues. We did get stuck enough to have to use the winch. We did lose a coil connection at one point that killed the first Jeep. We also had quite a transmission leak in Josh's Jeep that was along with us, but that looked a lot more like a real vehicle, but was still capable of doing absolutely everything we threw at it. And just watching the way their brains work and the way they approach a rocky trail the same way we might might think about the apexes of a turn on a racing track. It was really, really cool to learn and say where you need to be looking, what you need to be okay with, where you need to put which tire. And I don't think I'm good at it yet, but at least I got to see how it ought to work. And I probably will just let them all down in a disappointing fashion out in Utah. But it was always, every moment of it, a tremendous amount of fun. It just goes straight up anything, over anything. It bashes down, it's so hard. And he's not worried about it at all, just totally unfazed. I was certainly like, that is not what I had in mind for my Cayennes, and I hope Christopher didn't expose it to that, but at the end of the day, they're still running. Regardless, I was next in the seat to try this out, and he's, you know, guiding me and pointing and things like that. And, you know, you think last weekend I drove to Moda, Miami and back in my LP640, and in about, I don't know, 9, 10 hours, I was here to Coral Gables, Florida, you know, 800 miles. In this situation, it took us the same amount of time to go, I don't know, four miles, but it is in a very, very different way. And that's what I love is that when we say that we love cars, we all mean something slightly different. And in some cases, we mean something drastically different. And trying to experience and getting to experience this amazing alternative to a different passion about the automotive hobby was an awful lot of fun. And I was immediately just shocked because I thought, you know, still, given the size of these rocks, given the terrain, that I was going to get it stuck. But it really didn't matter how stuck you got it. As long as one of the four tires could touch any surface, this thing was going whichever way you wanted it to. So what I thought was going to be a really nicely prepared Jeep was honestly like Grave Digger monster truck just going crazy over everything. And I had absolutely no idea this is what it was. And so I cannot wait. This weekend, we are going to be competing. Christopher, I driving, they're going to be telling us how to do it, which I will still need a lot of guidance. But after a day of practice, I feel like we're ready. And so I don't know exactly what the competition is, what the challenges are, but we will be out in Hurricane Utah with Matt's Off-Road Recovery. And you can come out and watch if you want. We'll be competing against other teams. I think Sean, who's been here from Bikes and Beards and some other great off-road YouTubers, are going to be there. 
So we'll all be hanging out there saying there's gonna be like 10 or 20,000 spectators. Does look like we might see a little bit of rain, but hey, it's, <laughs> this thing can go through anything. So if you add a little bit of mud degree of difficulty, I think we'll be okay, but maybe bring an umbrella. But we are gonna have a blast and I would love to see you there. We'll have stickers and things like that to pass out, but I will certainly be in totally foreign territory. I'll bring the sunscreen, bring a nice hat, and I think we will have a blast. Thank you so much to Matt and his team out in Utah for the invitation. I cannot wait to see uh, how much of a fish out of water I am. Thank you for Christopher for being a great teammate and to Matt and Josh from Bleep and Jeep for <laughs> getting us such a rig to compete in. And once again, please do head over right now to Auto Tempest, search for your next car, find the results from all the major listing sites in one place because it is the best way to shop for a car and it's the easiest way to find all of them at once. But it also helps us step up our production value both here in the Vinwiki studio and in amazing projects like Car Trek and some other things that we've got working for the rest of the year. So please support Auto Tempest because that helps them support us and it does give you all the cars in one search.